It's a show hosted by Ashley Matheson, and the guest on the show was Stella Berry, a.k.a. the Anal Princess. Now, I'm going to start off with a, a clip of how these things go when they start, and I'm very upset about this because we have a real problem in this country, in the United States of America, with censorship. And it really grinds my gears the way that these social media platforms are just removing people's accounts. Oh God, I've, I've had so many Instagrams deleted. I have had Twitter accounts deleted. I've had so many TikToks Damn, deleted. what'd you do to get a Twitter Literally, account deleted? Not even anything. Well, sort of. But I just put a, um, a lot of people don't know this, but you can't put anything like even wearing a bikini in the header of your Twitter profile. Oh. So like I was wearing a bikini in my Twitter header and oh. they said it was like sexual solicitation or something. So hold on a second. You can't sell your body on Twitter now? Is that the case? What the? Where did that start? <laughs> what did that? What the? What? This is ridiculous. I feel for these ladies. This is uncalled for. If they want to take their clothes off on Twitter, I'd say that's okay. Yeah, why not? Give them a pass on that. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, her explanation was it's only in your header. You could put it everywhere else on your Twitter, just not in your header. Just not in your header for some reason, which makes no sense. Okay, yeah. keep it classy. It starts out with some very spicy talk. About sex. These are two girls who are in porn, have OnlyFans accounts. So let's get right into it. I've just always loved school. What were you at school for? I was doing, so I made my own major at NYU in health policy. So I combined, like, they have this program there at Gallatin. It's called, it's a school there where you can make your own major and you can pick any classes you want in any of the schools as long as you every term, like, write an essay about what you're doing and justify basically your choices. Mm -hmm. So I was combining philosophy classes, which I love philosophy, and like ethics and civics and history and um, medical history specifically. They gonna get to the fireworks factory <laughs> <laughs> this show needs a male producer to step in and go we gotta stop talking about what she majored in and where she went to college like no one gives a fuck <laughs> did, did she just say she just built her own degree at nyu she just took whatever she wanted yes she created That's her, what an her NYU own degree major is worth. yes it's very easy apparently according to her to it's get like letting children school. make their own pizza <laughs> I want to have on mine. All right. It's your pizza. <laughs> Go for it. Congratulations. <laughs> Actually, that would be pretty good now that I think about it. All right. So this is probably, I think, the best commercial for UCLA you'll ever see. In fact, if UCLA was smart, they would run this during college football games. They're crazy to not use this. And I did two years at UCLA doing all of my pre-med classes. And that is when... I started like going out again because I started meeting girls in my classes that were inviting me to sex parties and like all these things in LA. Like for some reason there were just some sexual ass girls in my classes at UCLA. You know, I was thinking about going back to school. Honestly, <laughs> I don't know if this podcasting thing is going to work out. You know, the shoey network's going down. I'm probably next. Should probably head out west. Check it out there. All right. I'm sure so, they'll be lining up to invite a club footage. <laughs> Yeah. Snaggletooth to their sex parties. Who invited this asshole onto the <laughs> yeah. show today? I'd rather have Kid Dion co-host saying, wow, this is getting very insulting. Chris has a shot, but... <laughs> All right, Chris, are you uh, going to pre-med with me? <sighs> no, I can't handle the rejection. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so the pandemic changed all of our lives, obviously. The, the lockdowns changed our lifestyles for me. It kind of pushed me into podcasting full-time. I know producer Chris's life changed, mm -hmm. and uh, here we see that uh, the same thing happened to Stella. The same time I was working at a homeless shelter for veterans as like my pre-med school um, work or like p for part of my resume, and I ended up fucking one of the clients that I had like a six-month-long sexual tension like romance with, mm -hmm. and that's when I lost my anal virginity. And then I did anal every day for a year before COVID hit, and then when COVID hit. I think I started to go crazy, like not going to school, just being fully isolated with this homeless guy doing a lot of anal. So I started sharing about it on TikTok, like hoping no one would find it. But of course it blew up. And those were the days where you could literally like say anal and asshole and everything on TikTok and yeah. you wouldn't get banned. I do admire her work ethic. Yeah, I know. <laughs> when life gives you lemons, <laughs> she figured it out. Shove them up your ass. <laughs> she figured it out. So, uh, so good for her. So. She met this homeless guy. She was volunteering at this uh, halfway house thing. And there's this homeless guy. We're going to find out more about him. And they start dating. And 
this guy introduced her to anal sex and she became a big fan very quickly. So she started TikToking about it. We'll learn more about that in a little bit. But the real question is, it's always this is always the question you ask a porn star, an OnlyFans girl. How are your parents with this? Are they cool? Is this uh I mean you were going you were a pre-med student. I gotta imagine they had expectations for you. Her mom's a doctor. So Let's see what they think. So what what do your parents think of your career? Like, are they well informed on what you do? Yeah. My parents have always just like, as cliche as it sounds, wanted to see me happy. Yeah. Like always. I have the best parents ever. I love my parents, um, especially my mom. Like my dad's very checked out. He's never given a fuck. Like my dad was the one taking me clubbing at like 14 years old. Like he's just like, let's do your thing. So you just heard her say, my parents just want me to be happy. They are pretty cool with whatever I decide to do with my life. And then not 30 seconds later, she says this. Uh-oh. But at that point it was like, she thought I went fucking crazy and she thought I was having a psychotic break and like was too stressed out and, and it was like making rash decisions and thought I needed to go to a mental hospital. So we're actually the way her mom took it was thinking that she was losing her mind and needed to go to a mental hospital when she said, I'm quitting med school and I'm going into porn because I just love anal so much. I can't get enough dicks in my butt. You do look happy in the movies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I'm all better now. So the winning formula for going into porn is not what I thought it was. Because when I think of like my favorite charity, of course, Boob Jobs for Runaways, when I think of what brings people into porn, it's uh, it's not this. It's yeah. Like, and I honestly try. don't think I would have done this or been confident enough to like create my own kind of value system and be confident in it and not give a fuck, like get over the kind of d- stigma mm-hmm. that's put on this. If I hadn't had really supported le- loving, unconditional, loving parents growing up. Is that usually what porn stars have is unconditionally loving parents growing up and a, a I, family that stays together? Clearly and... I'm naive. I thought it was <laughs> drug addiction. Yeah, I I, I could have sworn it was like an absent father, drug addiction, and yeah. single moms. Huh. All right. Well, news to me. They're very supportive. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So let's find out. This is actually after they start talking about it. They keep contradicting themselves. This is actually the real winning formula to becoming an, an OnlyFans girl. Finally. You definitely have to have some sort of se- like really sexual experience gone wrong to have a level of comfort with that part of your sexuality. literally like you had you've had to like explore that for a while yeah you've had to have hit rock bottom like this, <laughs> what i'm doing is not rock bottom we're at the top right now yeah no <laughs> going literally. back to what we were talking about so a traumatic sexual experience or two is what does it okay that makes a little more sense getting raped when you're eight okay yeah that, now it's making sense to me yeah it's a bummer <laughs> it's a it's a bit of a bummer but listen do we want to know these girls backstories no why do shows like this exist i am happy to say this show only has hundreds of views it's a newer podcast maybe it'll catch on huh there's attractive girls on here talking about sex eventually <laughs> so maybe you know the gavin michael ali's of the world will get into it or michael gavin ali i should say sorry can you imagine if porn stars had like baseball cards you read their biography on oh, the back. Oh, God. Yeah, their <laughs> stats. Their life story. <laughs> their stats. Like, holy shit, she took anal 300 times in 2008? <laughs> what a great average. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> Hall of Fame numbers she's putting uh, up. I got to see if those exist. <laughs> yeah, they probably do, actually. All right. This is where things get uh, a little nuts from my perspective. So your mom's an OBGYN. Mm-hmm. Is she your OBGYN? She is my OBGYN and all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> is that normal? Is she saying all my friends are also? <laughs> <laughs> I think her mom is the OBGYN to the porn stars. But is that normal for a mom to be the daughter's doctor in that way? I guess it's better than the dad. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> yeah. you brought up a very good point right now. I guess I'll get off it. Seems a little crazy. I hope I hope Kindy's writing down notes. I got a lot of questions for her. <laughs> how she feels about some of these things. And, and this is another question I have. So is she a good doctor? Because Stella claims she's a very good doctor, but this seems weird to me. So she only takes cash. So she um, she doesn't take insurance. So she meets all her patients for like an hour and a half every time, which insurance only pays for 15 minutes with a doctor. Yeah. So already that's like something so rare and hard to find. And on top of that, she's just really smart and detail oriented. And <laughs> detail oriented. I hope. <laughs> that's good. But is a doctor that doesn't take insurance, that's a good thing? Is that a positive thing? Sounds like she also doesn't have an office or something. Yeah, right. Just makes house calls. Yeah. 
back of the nail salon. <laughs> Meet yeah. you in the yard. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was odd. She goes, my mom would take insurance, but the rules are strict. You can't meet with a patient for more than 15 minutes. Well, you can just lie about how long you met with them if you wanted to play that route. And a lot of people use my, their fucking insurance. No, 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 pay cash. <laughs> okay. My mom is a my mom is a pre-licensed gynecologist. Yes, right. <laughs> Seems like uh, you know, the you know, the back alley kind. Yeah. But it. pretty inexpensive. So there's that. So her mom is definitely the best. Like she's put in and taken out my last six IUDs. Period. Yeah, she's just she's the best. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is there anyone else having a hard time with this? Am I the only one that thinks it's a little weird? I feel like you guys are just no. kind of like, oh, okay. Well, I, I'm a little numb to it. I, okay, it's a lot at once. It's a lot going on, yeah. right? Yeah, and that's not surprising me, but no, I get what you see here. <laughs> okay, <It's> insane. <laughs> this, is, this is nuts. All right, palate cleanser. This is a weird edit. This is this actually happens in the show right here. Read over yeah. the community guidelines exactly. a couple too many times. Yeah. So before couple time, couple time. What was all? I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> that was very odd. This is pretty well produced show. Looks like a nice home that she has there. Uh, the couch is must be brand new because there's no stains on it whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> That's impressive. First thing I look for. Right. So all right. Here is. The fact that Stella, you know, she's the anal princess right now, and she knows she's not going to do that forever, mm -hmm. but she has a plan, and I always appreciate that. I've grown a following that I can monetize in a billion different ways if I choose to. Like, I always told myself that, too. I'm like, at this point, I'm just trying to grow followers because you can kind of monetize followers, like, however. So that's actually um, not true. I'm going to call bullshit on that. I'm going to tell you, Stella, if you're listening. Uh, if people follow you because they like it when you take penises in your butthole, when you start reading books to them or changing up your content, they're probably not going to be fans anymore. I like that she just thinks like, well, now I just have all these fans. So I can just do whatever I want. And they're just yeah. going to throw money at me. Loyal forever. Yeah, no. Yeah, no that's she not has billions of options. She might have three options. There might be about billions. three options. Yeah, so yeah. they all involve sex work. <laughs> but good for her, though. She feels very good about herself. She's making a lot of money. She's doing well. She's got a huge following going on. And she thanks, she's so thankful for the homeless guy who taught her her love of butt sex. <laughs> because if not for that, she might be like a doctor or something now. Who I just knows? picture this giant cardboard box rocking back and forth with sex noise coming out of it. <laughs> I probably, if I hadn't like fucked that homeless client who is now like my ex-boyfriend that we dated three years and like he's I film with him all the time and oh, she's like my partner. Yeah. Soon. I probably yeah. wouldn't have have had this moment where I wanted to like throw it all away and I would have just stuck with the route I was on, which still would have been great. I just think I would have maybe not been as fulfilled or as proud of myself at this point. And I definitely would have been way more in debt and like oh yeah. Worked to the bone. Oh yeah. I'm I'm sure that if you were a surgeon, you'd definitely not have this kind of pride and self-esteem that you have going right now. Thank goodness for that homeless guy who fucked you in the ass. Also, of the things that her dad might be upset about, we're going to talk more about her dad. I think that she reveals some things that let you know the real truth of what's going on. Of the things that would upset a father, I got to think having a homeless boyfriend with a asshole fetish might be as bad as starting an OnlyFans account. Right. Maybe worse. She brings him home for dinner. So what are you into? <laughs> Your daughter. Yeah. Watch. <laughs> And at this point, the guy's doing better. He's he must be like, look, when you're talking about it, can you please stop bringing up homeless? Yeah, right. Yeah, I was down on my luck. Okay. <laughs> well, and... she goes into all of that. Let's find out more about her homeless ex boyfriend, who, by the way, she just broke up with a couple of months ago. So uh, they're they're still very friendly, still have a relationship. It, like it feels like fate brought us together. Like there was just something telling me I had to do it, which made no sense. Like he was literally bipolar, manic and uh living out of his car and for some reason i was like this man is magical like i need to hang out with him even though i'm like I i'm risking my job like i'm risking everything you just sound like a girl yeah i was just like i just have to fucking do this and now it's like the best thing i ever did <laughs> that bipolar manic homeless guy who's also an alcoholic the best thing i ever did was hooking up with him that was a really smart move so there's hope for well, us all well that's that i think that's what she's trying to give her her audience is some hope if yeah. if I'm better than that guy. <laughs> yes. In fact, she tells a story. I didn't clip this, but she tells a story about how she fucked her dad's best friend. 
And the guy was 58. She was 21. And I heard that and I went, Stuttering John, there is hope for you, buddy. Yeah, I got Maybe not Kate Meany. I got to meet her dad. I want to be friends with him. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey, by the way, me and your dad hit it off last night. <clears throat> Just want to let you know. All right. So we're still talking about this uh, this homeless guy, the, the ex-boyfriend, and what he's up to and uh, how she is now his sugar mama. Live Like I pay for his rent. I pay for everything he needs. But also like stipulations of that are he stays sober. He smokes weed, but that's he loves that. But he's sober from alcohol for, I think, five years now. Good for him. And so as long as he stays sober and takes his meds and works with his psychiatrist and goes to therapy and goes to his workouts five days a week, we're good. Like, he he has his freedom. That's so kind of you. Honey, we're through. <laughs> does that sound like freedom? As long as he does this. And then he does that. Yeah. And then he does this thing and then that thing. And he has to do it every fucking day. And if he does it, he's out. But other than that, total freedom. It's great. One of my hobbies is not working out. <laughs> I thought that was kind of interesting. So, yeah. so now he lives with her or she bought a house for him. I think she lives in it too. And so the arrangement is... You have to stay on your meds, see a psychiatrist, not drink, work out every single day. I mean, all of these things are shit I would never do. <laughs> I'm saying no to all of these things, but whatever. Oh, do I still get the fuck in the ass? No, yeah. I, I have a new boyfriend now. <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I had a nice I was living in a car, but it was a nice car. <laughs> yeah, I mean, front seat and a back seat. <laughs> Four doors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I parked in a gated community, so I got that going for me. Now... If you didn't think that this was a bad idea from what I've already presented to you, then I think this is what's going to put it over the top for, for everyone paying attention. Us meeting and like just our relationship is the most beautiful thing in the world. And he has a giant tattoo of you, right? Yeah. Also, like I literally, I did a shoot with Riley Reed recently mm -hmm. and it was like a full day thing. I come home at 2 a.m. and he's like, hey, look what I did today. And it's my face on his arm. Oh my, uh, that's kind of sick, though. It's yeah. so I would, sick. I'd be like, good. <laughs> he has his mom. He has his mom who who passed um, a couple years ago on one shoulder. And then he has me on the other shoulder. Oh, yeah. little angel. It's so cute. That's so disturbing. And I want to point out, he did this after they broke up. <laughs> and Stella's still like, isn't that sweet? Isn't that such a nice gesture? Like, run for the Z Hills. What are you doing right yeah. now? And by the I think way, you might have stopped doing one of the things on your list. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Where'd you get that 500 bucks to do that? <laughs> Holy shit. Sure, she paid for it. Ugh. So she put a TikTok out about it. I thought I'd show everybody okay. what this tattoo looks like. Look at this. She's posing in front of it. It's not flattering. She's an attractive girl, but that tattoo. Yikes. Yikes. <laughs> okay. All right, well. She got famous from TikTok, as she alluded to earlier, because she started enjoying anal, and she'd go on TikTok and talk about anal, and she came up with this joke, and I know Cardiff likes jokes. This is the first TikTok she ever put out. And I just shared a TikTok, like, if I had a nickel for every time I lost my anal virginity in the back seat of a homeless guy's car on the first date, I'd have one nickel. <laughs> and that blew up so much. That was my first TikTok. <laughs> and that blew up so much. And I was like, fuck, I hope no one sees this. Like, I hope. And TikTok was so small at that point. I was like, no one's going to see this, you mm -hmm. know? First off, TikTok was not small in 2020. No. <laughs> That's not true at all. But also... The idea that she put up there like, yeah, you know, I, I fucked a homeless guy in the back of a car and took anal for the first time. No one would think that was real. People would think that's a joke. Right? I'm processing. <laughs> okay. Yes, I mean, if I, I saw I agree. someone TikTok about <laughs> that, I would be like, well, she must, she can't be making that up, obviously. Okay. So let's talk about how she feels about her porn career. And I do appreciate her work ethic. I think she's doing it the right way. I call this clip, go hard or go home. Like, even if I, because I knew if I was like, if I do porn, I'm going to do it to the absolute max. Like, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to not limit myself at all. Like, I'm going to go hard. <laughs> and I was like, even if I only ever make enough money to pay for food and rent, I'll be happy. All right. I think that's a lie. If she's making Ray DeVito money, she's out of the business. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There, there's no fucking way. She's making a lot of money. On OnlyFans. Sure. She, she at one point said when she started making 40000 a month, she decided to quit school. I was like, yeah, it's probably a good time to quit school. <laughs> probably when I'd be like, I don't need this shit. <laughs> you could have made that decision a lot earlier than the 40s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably a 10. Yeah, I'd probably be like, yeah. all right. 
<laughs> we're good. It's of course, growing. it's comfy when you can make up your own degree, but <laughs> well, yeah, that does help. <laughs> what kind of doctor are you? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Let you know tomorrow. So, I do like the idea that she's going to go for it. She's going to go all the way, and I do have. Uh, I think this is perfect for W A T S. I got to. Uh, Remember to bring this over to that board. No, it's kind of sick. Like, I love people that just, like, embarrass themselves on social media. For me, that's my favorite. Yeah. That is a good idea. I'm with you on that. I like people who do that, too. It's impressive. All right. So here's some more, uh, some fun stuff. So we're asking about, she's the anal princess. But what's her preference? You know, if, if there's only one dick. Let's say there's a scenario where there's only one penis in the room. All right. I can't get enough dicks in my body. You Thank you, Carter. <laughs> Thank you, Kinky Loco. <laughs> uh, that's what that was. Let's find out. Let's find out the uh, the preference here. Do you prefer anal over like having regular quote quote sex? I don't think I prefer it, but it's definitely like tied. Like I don't prefer one or the other. There's just pros and cons to both. Mm -hmm. Love pussy sex. Okay, I left that in there because I've never heard someone call it pussy sex before. And uh, I did pull this ISO for us. Love pussy sex. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, pussy sex is pretty good. <laughs> it sounds like a... I can't get enough dicks in my body. <laughs> I don't know. I've heard you say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was taken out of context. That's probably AI, Carl, that the editor created, be my guess. Because I just like pussy sex. I'm a pussy sex guy. That's Jerking guys think. off in a theater would be my healing process as well. <laughs> We're, there's so much evidence against you. Bro. Where are you coming from? Well, this, this can't be me. I just sucked off so many dudes. Is is that Rocco? Rocco's doing that amazing impression of me, isn't he? No, yeah. no. Nope, nope. Son of a bitch. I'm sucking dicks. Huh? <laughs> I can't believe you guys have that many drops and Vinny's not even here. <laughs> Probably got six more. Well, here we go. All right. So you guys ready to get turned off by this girl? I mean, so far, everything she said, you're like, all right, this sounds... Uh, Exciting. Sounds yeah. like someone I'd want to date for sure, I right? Could be homeless. <laughs> for me, like every time I had sex since I was 13 years old, like I lost my virginity at 13. After I had the first sex I ever had in my life, I got a UTI. So, like, I naturally get UTIs every time I have sex. It's just like genetic, it runs in my family. All the women in my family are that way. So, I have to take antibiotics every time I have sex. And uh, when I do anal, <laughs> but I love anal. But are there some things that you do have to worry about because of anal? Sh maybe shitting on people sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be the, the main one <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so I love that this girl gets a UTI every time she has sex. There's a specific order you got to go in. I keep trying to tell the ladies yes. this. They're not understanding the order. But you should okay. know the order. You got to know the order. It should be taught. It really should be. Yeah. So it's, it's almost uh, reverse alphabetical This is what you want to do. So <laughs> it's crazy to me that she's saying that it's genetic, oh. almost like John's hemorrhoids now. It's like, well, I mean, obviously it's not my lifestyle that I'm getting UTIs every day. It's just, I mean, this would happen anyway. This is just what goes on around here. Yeah, it's the hand I was dealt. Is, is that what her mom tells her when she's paying cash for every fucking appointment? <laughs> yeah, no, you're doing everything right. I don't know. You just keep getting UTIs. Well, see you again tomorrow. Yeah, where was mom to teach the order? Mom should have taught the order. Yeah. Because this is crazy. She's talking about ass to mouth. I know my mother-in-law listens to the show. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes my folks pop it on. This gets a little they know, nuts. They know you never go ass to mouth. They know. They they do know that. I talked <laughs> to them about through it the war. every Thanksgiving. <laughs> so she talks about going ATM and when that can be dangerous for her. The first time it actually happened, I realized I get strep from putting other people's, like if it, something was in, like a butt plug was in a girl's butt and I put it in my mouth, that's when I get strep because <laughs> I don't naturally carry strep like in me. Yeah. And so like I'd gone ass to mouth, like a guy would put his dick in my butt and then put it in my mouth a billion times. Like mm -hmm. I did that the first night I lost my anal virginity. <laughs> <laughs> wow. She, she spent some time in medical school, she said. Yeah. Oh, no. She she said, I cut all this stuff out because it was boring, but she's been studying the female body and she that's why she went into med school and, and all the classes she took in college and everything. I want to know more about how the body works. And then she's like, yeah, but when I grab a butt plug out of some other girl's butt and shove it in my mouth, I get strapped and it's bad. 
Yeah, <laughs> I, would, I would imagine. <laughs> it sounds pretty bad. Uh, but maybe it, 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 this this uh, UTI thing could be genetic. That might have been what inspired her mother to become a gynecologist. Ah, if she wanted to solve this, this was her life's mission. <laughs> and now she's fingering porn stars for cash. <laughs> <laughs> so it all worked out. Yeah, another success story. All right, so now we're talking about ass to mouth, and she did ass to mouth their first time, and. At first, she didn't know that you have to like clean out those orifices before you do that. Now she does know that, but it's worked out for her. So now we're back at the dad again. For some reason, dad <laughs> comes back into the conversation. My dad and I don't talk that much. I actually recently just started talking to him more often. And like I said, he's kind of just a free spirit. He doesn't give a fuck what I do. He doesn't talk about a lot of shit with me. He's just like, talk me off. So it started with... My parents are so nurturing and caring. They just want me to be happy. And now we're finding out her dad doesn't talk to her. <laughs> she, they don't even talk. Because the question was, does your dad know that you fucked his friend? And she's like, probably the whole town does. So I would imagine. But we've never talked about it. He doesn't talk to me about anything. <laughs> He's just walking down the street. Everyone's himself. laughing their asses off. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's so funny? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right, so then the question comes up, and I'm sure this is what Cardiff would have asked next if he was doing this show. What's something you haven't done that you want to do? You always want to ask the uh, the porn stars who are adventurous, what else could you be doing that you're not doing today? This is almost like an interview question. <laughs> so is there anything that you haven't done that you want to try? I did double anal for like 10 seconds recently like i was just doing a dp shoot like one in the ass one in the pussy and the guys were like hey like you're doing really good do you want to try like two in the ass and so we did just for fun and it worked and so now i want to do like a full-on like double ass <laughs> double anal love that shoot i also like i've never put two dicks in my pussy which apparently like i just like doing that stuff because it is an overwhelming euphoric feeling yeah. first off <laughs> a couple things here the guy who suggested that we both put our penises in your butt, he's a gay guy, right? That's a weird thing to want to do, I would imagine. I'm, I'm with you, but I like his supportive nature. Yeah, you're doing like, so good. You're doing good. I think you're ready to up it to the next level. Yeah. You want to try that right now? You ready, kid? <laughs> and if she did double vag, what kind of UTI would she get then? Oh, God. Could you imagine? Again, with the order. Even when it's double, you got to go with the order. So, <laughs> Yeah, one doesn't negate the other. I'm really glad they edit porn videos i'm glad i'm not seeing these conversations that they're having yeah right oh you're not even crying all right well do you want to have both of us in your butt or what else can we do <laughs> wasn't ready for this <laughs> all right so then we start talking about um butt plugs and uh prepping with butt plugs whether they prep or not very different than the way centering john doesn't prep as you know <laughs> he's got his underpants there oh yeah to help him out they have something else going on. And butt I, plugs are fun. I love the butt yeah. plug. And I didn't think, like, I never used prep before using butt mm -hmm. plugs because it's like, whatever. In yeah, and who out. cares? But then the vibrated one, I guess, was doing some gyrating up there. And when I pulled it out, I was like, what the fuck is this? Thank God I did this over the fucking toilet. Dude, like, I've had some horrible experiences with butt plugs because you're right. Like, why prepare for them? So, <laughs> Shadow3x says, her ass is a reverse clown car. <laughs> I get it. Um, yeah, so I guess, you know, they're like, well, if I'm going to shove something in my ass, I'm just like by myself, who cares? We'll just see what happens. And I guess bad things happen quite a bit with that. Then they go on a whole story about anal beads. And she said that her mom's friend had anal beads in a room and they found them when they were little kids and they were playing with them. And the mom's friend came in and said, you got to put that down. Like, what? This is all crazy. I never played with anal beads growing up. Like G.I. Joe's. You sound jealous. I know. What the fuck? I don't have these kind of this kind of lifestyle these kids do. You never know. What if they were anal G.I. Joe's? Well, they were after I was done with them. <laughs> <laughs> Cobra! Why do you think I like that impression so much? I would just sit there with uh, with my Cobra Commander going, What is going on here? So the, I'm reading through the comments underneath this video. Like I said, it's not a, a ton of views. So the people who are finding it are seeking it out. And uh, I loved this one. I've listened to Stella's origin story like five times already on different podcasts, LOL. Well, maybe you should stop watching her being interviewed on podcasts. It's weird. Yeah. Like, if you're a fan of her work, I get it. Sure. 
However, if you then go, I want to see what she has to say and what she's like as a person, you are a lunatic. Yeah. You're the kind of guy who goes to the bunny ranch for companionship. R yes. You're right. You're like, oh, but can we just like sit and talk about yeah. life and stuff? I saw a ball game yesterday. <laughs> same, same rate. Do whatever right. you want. <laughs> exactly. right. Yeah. And then there's another comment on here that says, can you ask questions we don't already know the answers to? I'm such a fan. I want to hear new content. So apparently this woman goes around with her fucking homeless guy taking my anal virginity story. <laughs> yes. And the fans it. are like, whatever. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. We get it. Who are these podcasts? W-A-T-P.